What's up guys, this video is a theoretical overview of movement and positioning. So it's gonna be from a very broad theoretical kind of point of view. It's not gonna be a gameplay video. It's gonna be a top-down video of, you know, when you do X, the enemy does Y. And so how you can use that to your advantage. This is some pretty basic stuff, but I think this game's about mastering the basics. All right, so obviously the most fundamental thing about positioning is it's about limiting the angles that we're vulnerable from. So right now, you know, in the middle of the open, we're vulnerable from 360 degrees and we can only look and cover 90 degrees at a time. So the first thing that we wanna do is put our back to a wall. If we put our back to a wall like this, this is a wall, now all of a sudden, I mean, we can still look forward, so now all of a sudden we've cut our vulnerabilities down uh, in less than half, right? We're only vulnerable here and here. So that's why I put our back to a wall, we're way more safer. Now we can put our back to a corner. And the thing with a corner is, um, not only are we more safe, let's say we're a corner, see now we only have an even smaller amount of red than we had before, but now we also have an escape route, right? I can, if I need to get out of here, I can move this way or I can move this way and I'm still up against the wall and I can escape out of this corner if I have to. And the last thing we can do, of course, is we could put ourselves in a dead end corridor like this and now all of a sudden, nothing can flank me. I can respond to every angle that I'm vulnerable to. Now the disadvantage to being in a dead end like this is obviously you can't get out. So like if you aggro a, a patrol and a bunch of chaos warriors come in here or a gas comes or whatever, whatever, uh, you could very easily kill yourself because you can't get out of here. It's an all in strategy. All right, so once we put our back to a wall, how are we actually gonna fight like that? Well, what we're gonna do is called wall scoot, and we're gonna move laterally along this wall. So if you stay here, you're gonna get surrounded and die. But let's say we move to the right. Okay, so we were here, so now we move to the right on this side. Okay, so over here, this guy can hit me, and this guy can hit me, but this guy can't. He's gonna walk over here. So I move over to the right, and then I wait for this guy to walk over here, right? So at times equal to, you know, five seconds or whatever, this guy's over here, and I, I'm right here. Okay, see now I'm surrounded again. So now what I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna move to the left, like this. Okay, so I'm gonna move to the left, I'm gonna end up here. Now what happens? This guy can attack me and this guy. Okay, let, let's say he could, I moved a little bit too far. But now what's gonna happen? This guy who moved all the way over here, now he's gonna come, now he's gonna try to move all the way back. And so you can see that by moving back and forth at any time, I'm limiting the amount of enemies that can attack me. There's three enemies drawn, but only one or two can ever attack me at any given time, not three. All right, so next we can use terrain that the rats won't cross over. So let's say this is like a log or, or something like that, that the rats don't want to jump over, that they want to jump around, and this is like some wall. All right now, by moving between these three positions, I can completely determine the engagement. So if I'm at position one, if I'm here at position one, the rats, they're going to come here, 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 right? They're all going to take the closest route to me. They're not going to come all the way over there. They're going to take the closest, most direct route to me. So they're going to come here. Now, once I get here, I retreat to position two. Once I get to position two, the rats are all over here. They're not gonna come around me again. So I can easily cover this whole angle and I can deal with all these rats. And if the density gets too much, I can just retreat, right? I can just retreat to position three and then I can just escape out of here. So I get all the advantages of being in a dead end corridor where I can cover every angle, but I have some additional advantages where I can see things coming at me. So I don't have the disadvantage of being blocked in and losing my sight. I can see everything and I can deal with all the rats. Now this isn't an entirely foolproof plan because it is possible that a single rat might come behind me or might try to block my escape or something like that. I just need to be aware of that eventuality and deal with it if it comes up. All right, so movement is another thing that we can do to limit the angles that we're vulnerable to. So let's say we start out here at position zero. This is obviously a horrible place to be. Maybe there's like a horde and a patrol or something. If we stay here, we're obviously gonna die. So at position zero, the rats are coming like this, right? Everybody's coming this direction. They're heading right to me. So I'm gonna move at position one. Now once I now as I move to position one, there's gonna come like this, this, this. If I can survive passing this guy and this guy, if they don't intercept me, then I can move uh, to position two. Now by the time I get to position two, you see, I mean you can see where I'm going here. The rats, their pathing is gonna end up looking like this. They're all going to be following and they're all gonna be in this little area right here. And by the time I get to position three, again, they're all in this area. And so I've just linearized the engagement through my movement. All right, so kiting with two players can be a little bit more difficult than kiting with one player. And one thing I see happen all the time is I'll see the first person, like he'll go this way. And then I'll see the second person 
he'll go this way. And you have to remember that each has a big group of enemies. There's a group of enemies here and a group of enemies here. And once these guys meet up together, they're gonna pull both groups of enemies on top of themselves and they can kill one or they could kill both of themselves. So the solution to this problem is either go in the same direction and be intentional about doing that or make sure you meet up at a, um, at a choke point, right? So let's say there's a choke point here and here. If you meet up right at this choke point and if you time it just right, you can meet. And so the orange guy can come through the choke point and the yellow guy can come through the choke point and now they can meet up together uh, and they can follow the same path and they can avoid uh, killing the other player. So when you're reviving down players, be intentional about which side of them you're going to stand on. If you're at position one, so you're behind the down player, who's this yellow dot, um, then the enemies will still attack the down player and he's going to lose health. Maybe you want to do that, or maybe the player has a grim, or maybe they have really low health, in which case maybe you want to stand at position two, where the enemies will attack you and not the player. It just depends on the situation on which is better. Generally, you probably want to do two if you want to keep the player alive on Legend. Another thing you can do to manipulate the rat AI is if there's like a gas rat and you're in a corridor like this, you can stay in that position one and you can wait right until the gas throws. And then right when the gas throws, he's going to put gas all the way over here and then you back up to position two. Now when you're at position two, the enemies, they're going to walk right in front of this gas and you can stay at position two and you can force the enemies to stand in the gas. And so uh, they'll get friendly fire from that. And that's a good thing you can do to whittle down the horde and it can act as a great force multiplier. Lastly, I want to finish up with a note about bosses. Um, bosses plus hordes plus specials are what end up wiping most legend parties, I think. And uh, I think it's because a lot of times people misplay how to handle the boss. You get to determine where the boss goes. You want to be moving the boss around. You don't want the boss to be moving you around. Part of that comes with mechanics and part of that is just good decision making, right? So if there's a horde coming, let's say there's a horde coming from this side over here. There's this big horde coming and the boss is on you, right? You want to move the boss over here and you can just walk around in circles and all you want to do is buy time while the rest of your team comes over here to deal with the horde, right? You only want to deal with one target at a time. If you're by yourself and you're against the boss and the horde, you can use the boss to kill the horde. You don't want to try to DPS both of those at the same time. You can just wait, you can just kite around in your circle uh, and the horde will follow you kiting in a circle and the boss will kill the horde because bosses will do friendly fire to them. And so if you're just patient, if you just bide your time, the boss will kill the horde for you and then you can DPS the boss down by itself.